So before we get into really studying geometry, we first got to learn some of the language of geometry. Like learning any new type of topic, you've got to learn how to speak in that topic. And with geometry, it's not just learning how to use the proper terms, it's also learning how to write those terms and use the proper symbols that we're going to use. So this first lesson today is all about the symbols and the language of geometry. So let's get to it. Remember, you're going to take notes while you're watching this, okay? So anytime something gets written down, make sure you write it down. Uh, also, if I say something that you think, hey, that might be important, I'm write that down as well, even if I don't write it down. This is part of our note-taking skills. So let's take a look at our note sheet. You can print this sheet off if you need to, or you could just use a notebook. So as we said, before studying geometry, we need to learn the language. Everything starts with three basic terms, point, line, and plane. A point is nothing more than a location. It tells me where something is. That's all it is. It has no size. Oh, that's supposed to be a no. Okay. We can't say one point is bigger than another point. They're all exactly the same thing. We represent a point using a dot. And we always name our points with capital letters. Okay, That's just something that's done in all of mathematics. So this would be point A. Okay, If I named it another letter, I'd use another letter. But it's important to know that we always name our points using capital letters. Okay, A line is a collection of points that extend infinitely in two directions. Okay, so when we look at a line, we're looking at a line that looks something like that. It doesn't have to be horizontal, by the way. And generally, we think of a line as being just a straight line. That's how we tend to think of things. But really what has happened is we've put a bunch of points on this line together. Okay, Kind of like when you're in gym class and your gym teacher says, okay, everyone line up to be picked for basketball. Everyone lines up. Now, each of you is a point that is creating this line. So there's many points on the line all over the place. We name a line using any two of those points. If I call that point A and this point B, I could then call this line AB. Now to tell it's a line, we have to use appropriate symbol. Okay, I want to use a line over it with two endpoints, letting me know that this is line AB. We don't have to name it AB, we could name it line BA. Okay, and notice I'm not using the two furthest points. It doesn't matter which points. If I have point C it somewhere in between, I could call this line CB. It's still the same thing. Now, sometimes in textbooks, they'll actually name the line using an italicized letter. So they might have an L here, and they'll just call that line L. Okay. In that case, they're using a lowercase letter, and it's italicized. That's going to tell you that it's going to be a different type of thing. A plane, a plane is a two-dimensional surface that extends infinitely in all directions. So a plane is a flat surface. You can think of your desktop as being a representation of a plane. Usually when we represent planes in drawings, we tend to make them look like parallelograms. Okay, so it can be a little confusing sometimes. Sometimes they'll name a plane using just a little italicized capital letter. So this might be plane P. Okay, plane P. Sometimes they name a plane using three points on a plane. It only takes three points to make a plane. So any three points that are not in a line together are going to create a plane. Just like it only takes two points to create a line. So that's why we can name a line using only two points. Any two points make a line. Any three nonlinear points make a plane. So we could call this plane ABC. Okay. Now notice I used another term there, collinear or non-collinear. So those are other terms that we're going to want to take a look at. So when we talk about collinear, collinear points 
are together, co, kind of like co-pilots, linear. So they're together on a line. So collinear points are three or more points on the same line. Has to be three or more because if you have two points, they're going to be on the same line no matter what. So if I drew my line and put some points on here, A, B, C, D, all of these points are all collinear. If I put a point over here, that point is not collinear. So these four are all collinear, and but they're not collinear with E. Now, E and B would be on the same line because, hey, any two points make a line. So I could draw a line through A, B, and E, or E and C. So two points make a line, but it takes three or more to be collinear. Coplanar are four or more points on the same plane. Okay, so when we've got a plane, I could have a point here, a point there, and a point there, and they're all on the same plane. Now, if there's a line coming through point B here, and it's going to come out the bottom of the plane here, there might be a point over here. So now A, C, and D are not coplanar. D and B will be coplanar because they're on the same line. Okay, so you could draw a plane. There could be a plane that comes through and catches up like that. So it's going to be perpendicular to or intersecting the plane. That gets a little more confusing when we start looking at things like that. And three-dimensional things are a little tough to see. Speaking of three-dimensional, that's what we get into is space. So three dimensions extending in all directions. And that's where we tend to live. We live in a three-dimensional world. We live with a space. In fact, later on, we'll watch a neat video about that kind of thing, too. Okay? A line segment is a part of a line with two endpoints. It's important that we know this term, this term endpoints. That's a term that's going to be very useful for us. So if I draw a line segment, I'll call that A, B. A and B are the midpoints of the line segment. Now we name a line segment using its endpoints. So this is segment AB, or we could call it segment BA. Okay. If I put another point on here, C is no, I wouldn't use that to name the segment because it's not one of the endpoints. If I call it segment AC, we're only talking about this much of it. If I call it segment AB, now we're talking about that much of it. Notice the difference. I don't have arrows on the ends of my symbol here. That's telling me that I'm naming a segment and not a line. Okay, so our symbols are very, very important. And not using your symbols will cost you points on tests and quizzes. So be careful of that. All right, so continuing on with some more definitions. Array. Array is part of a line. with one endpoint. Now, the other point on the ray can be anywhere. Okay, It doesn't have to be at the arrow. In fact, often we don't need, the arrow is not a point. That's something telling us that it's continuing on. So when I name my ray, I'm going to name this ray AB. We always name a ray the first letter has to be the endpoint. Okay, That's important to us. If I had another point here, I could also call it ray AC. These two rays name the same thing because the second letter just tells me that the line continues through there. But the first letter must be the endpoint. Very important there. If I take two rays and put them together at an endpoint, I get an angle. So an angle are two rays that share an endpoint. And once it creates an angle, that endpoint gets a new term. It becomes known as a vertex. So when I draw a ray here, there's its endpoint and another ray. I'll put some points on these rays. That's point A. I'll call that point B. We'll call this the endpoint of both of them. I'll call it E. And that endpoint of both rays is now the vertex of the angle. 
Remember, the angle is actually the entire figure. It's not part of it. It doesn't have a length. You can't measure how long an angle is. That doesn't make sense. We can measure how much it opens in degrees. So that's something we're used to doing, and you've probably done that in some other courses. When we name our angle, we use an angle symbol, and I can call it A, E, B. I can call it angle B, E, A, or I could just call it angle E. Now, I can call it angle E because it's the only angle at that vertex. Okay? The vertex, when we use three letters, the vertex must be the middle letter. Okay? That's very important. You can't start naming your angle E, A, B. That wouldn't work. If I'm going to name, start with E, I have to just call it E. But if there's another angle here, if I put in another angle like that, put in another ray, now I can no longer call this angle E because I don't know which angle E you're talking about. Because now there's angle A, E, B. There's angle A, E, C. That's a different opening. There's also angle C, E, B, the entire angle together. So I don't know which angle E you'd be talking about. So this can only be used when it's the only angle at that vertex. Safe, always be safe and use three letters, then you're on the safe side, okay? Now that's all our naming. So your homework tonight is to go through and name some figures. Make sure you use the appropriate symbols. And I'm on the answer key, I'm gonna put more answers than what you're asked to. Like this one, it may say name in two different ways. I may name it a whole bunch of ways so you can see some other options, okay? That's all for today's lesson. Get your homework done. Make sure you check your homework answers. Okay? It is very important that as you fit once you finish your homework, go back and check your answers. Make sure everything is the same. Okay? If you leave off something, make a note of that. If you get something wrong, make a note of that. If you have questions, please bring them tomorrow for class. Okay? That's all we got for today. So, I will see you tomorrow.